not. I believe in starting all speeches with fused flattery and uh, <laughs> indulgent praise. Uh, but I actually want to say something that really is about my regard for you. I came in here this evening, uh, another veteran of this particular event, sincerely believing that we were talking about the momentous time we're in, a moment we're told 12 years before we are annihilated by the flood. I was shocked to discover that in the midst of Hurricane Leonardo, the tennis courts in Trinity were still active throughout the night. So I perhaps realized that I've taken this motion a little seriously and considered the urgency of our times a little bit too profoundly. I apologize for that. I come from the science side of the house. We take things seriously. But I actually am speaking up for the value of a transcendent education and an idea that we need and need to be in a position to overcome the challenges that are coming towards us. And so I want to bring to you this opportunity that allows me to bring to you two pearls, gems of mental health knowledge. I have to say I take these opportunities because I have only one interest in talking to you about your mental health. The tsunami that we're anticipating is not the one we need to be concerned about. I believe we will be okay. But two people every day in this country lose their lives through a tsunami of mental health crisis, and we are doing nothing about it. Young people such as yourselves are coming to the point that says there is no point in me going on, and when the tsunami comes, we will need to be have resourceful Trinitarians, I think, humanitarians, academicians, but people who really know how to live. Now the Phil, you know how to live. <laughs> you know what it means to live. I'm hoping that at this time in your lives, this is the time you can embrace that. How will you do it? Well, you'll be resilient. The times we're in are reminiscent of the times of the great Sir Michael Rutter. You haven't heard of him? He's the father of child psychiatry, and when he was 11, he was transported across the Atlantic Ocean in the midst of the U-boat war, in the peril of the, uh, of the back of the Atlantic, to the safety of New York. His parents didn't know what they were doing. In reality, he saw a calamitous challenge to people. 50% of the kids on that transporter were extremely distressed. And the rest of his life, he actually studied what makes people resilient. What gives people the ability to bounce back? This is the ability we're needing. If the science got closed, we'd probably be okay. But if the arts got closed, what are we going to do? We need to be resilient. We need to come back and build it again. And how do we do that? Well, he studied it, and I have to tell you, he, he found six factors that made resilience real. You can, most of you are not listening to me, you're on your mobile phones anyway, so look it up in your mobile phone, okay? The Domains of Resilience by Michael Rutter. Six domains. The first one is education, folks. You have superb educational opportunities here. Let's end this facile dispute between the arts and the sciences and realize that education is apical, and then realize that the real apical education is the one of this thing, the noodle. The yogurt inside your head, it matters. Neuroscience is the apical education, a security of base. There are 10,000 people out on our streets at the moment with no security of base, 4,000 children. It is institutional abuse. If there were Christian brothers doing that, we'd be locking them up. But the reality is the state is doing that, and you're not doing enough about it, I'm not doing enough about it. We need to be resilient about that. We need to have social competencies. I see the, the, the delights of the film members and how they embrace each other and how they actually engage with each other, and I like it. I'm into that embracing stuff. It's all important. I can see you guys are too. It's fantastic. But you need to realize that that too is resilient. Friendships. There's no career advancement, no degree in science, no diploma in the arts faculty that's worth losing a friend over. And talents and interests and positive values. We have killed positive values in this country with an efficiency that the tutors never imagined. But the reality is the future, your resilience, overcoming, overcoming the tsunami that may be coming, depends on your developing these resilient factors. Ask yourself what skill, what talent, what interest you might have had in the past. And if you say, I used to do that, ask yourself why you still say, I used to. Why not I am doing it? Why not I will do it? Read that poetry. Actually, microwave that mouse. Let's do it now. <laughs> we used to do it. Why don't we do it now? I'll tell you why we don't do it. Because we've lost sight of what it is to be well. There is a discipline 
in the humanities it understands wellness. But there's only one that teaches it. The only one that actually can empower it. And that is mental health science. That is psychiatry the discipline I speak for. But do you know what it is to be well? Do you have any idea? No, you don't. Why? Because you didn't either. For 2,000 years, medicine didn't study what it was to be well. We were preoccupied with what it was to be ill. But then the economists came along. Can you imagine? Is there an economist speaking here? It turns out the new economic forum. Have you heard of them? Look them up. They're fantastic. The new economic forum went to Davos, and they said if we actually annihilate the world's economies, we will not have a society worth keeping. They found that well people, people who could overcome the dilemmas of coming, the challenges, the tidal wave is coming, would be well people. And how do we build them? We will build them in Trinity, but how? Is it by filling them with more philosophy and poetry? Perhaps. Is it by filling them with more science? Perhaps. But the empiricist discovered, no, it's actually about five things that happen here in the field every night. I'm going to tell you what they are. It's about wellness. And well people do things. They connect with each other. Now, I wonder how much connection we're going to be doing this evening. But I'm in four favorites, and I'm encouraging it because well people do some connecting. I suppose you have to realize that well people keep learning. Yes, yes, they keep learning in the science faculty, but they also keep learning in the humanities. Right? The point is, we learn, and learning is apical. And the learning you do now, I often say, I got so many points in 1977. I may as well say I ran the marathon in 1977. It doesn't mean I'm fit or bright now. You have to keep learning. And every learning is actually an additional learning and it is a division between the humanities and the sciences because, well, people are active. How many of you run? How many of you play tennis? How many of you, I don't know, do whatever it is to keep active? Activity matters. Sit down for long enough and you'll be in a diaper soon and somebody putting things into your mouth with a, with a soft spoon. You don't want it. You don't imagine it will happen, but it will unless you keep active. Well, people take notice. I'm looking around and I'm seeing the brightest, the beautifulest, the strongest, the fittest. My goodness, Trinity's no worry when the tsunami comes. The Phil is no worry. What a magnificent crowd you are. Have you any idea? Why do I tell you? Am I making a craven appeal to your support? Am I appealing to your popularity? Yes, of course I am. <laughs> but why am I doing that? Because the biggest detriment you have is a lack of self-esteem. Each one of you has an imposter inside you. Each one of you is a person who says, I'm not really as good as I'm letting on. But I'm here to tell you, you are fantastic. Now, how many of you have to do the next exercise? The final exercise in wellness. It is giving. Giving. In my youth, giving was giving to the Vincent de Paul, giving to the missionaries, and lots of giving that we thought was bountiful and might have been condescension. I'm in favor of that giving, don't get me wrong. I'm a card-carrying giver to the missionaries. But the reality is the giving we need to do now to overcome the challenges is a giving to each other, a giving to ourselves, a giving of new kind, giving way, giving in, giving ground. The giving that the faculties in the arts need to hear from the faculties in science. How many, how likely is it that they're going to be able to go into a room that, that they've been <coughs> fighting for 10 years? And that one of them will go to the other and say, do you know what, we have been in dispute with you for the last 10 years. And I have been talking bollocks for all of it. But they won't do this. But this would be the giving that makes the difference. Giving way, giving ground, giving respect. Giving yourself some credit. So I want you to do an experiment in giving. Because I am an empiricist. We're going to measure some giving now. I want you, everybody here, to rise to your feet. Now, up, all of you. And I want you to get out your fists. And I want you to beat your chest and say, I'm fantastic! Now, I think that was pathetic, don't you? I, I think that was pathetic, don't you? I think, come on, I, I want to really resonate. I'm fantastic! Can you do it? Okay, I will pass. Now, the real test, no, 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 Class is not over yet. This is mental health science. I now need you to turn to the person to the right of you, to the left of you, since you're better. The right and the left of you, and look at that person and say, I think you're fantastic. I think you're fantastic. I think you're fantastic. Thank you for listening to me. Be well, be resilient, we'll overcome the next tsunami, and it doesn't need to worry us because we're going to be mentally strong and we're going to be well for each other, and we're going to end the disputes that have been dividing us. Education 
resilience, giving and thankfulness is what makes us well and prepared for the next time. Thank you very much.